how do these two orbits collide or interact. <laughs> Stephen Miller's and Donald Trump's, how did they find each other in the uh, the political space? Well, they definitely found each other. Stephen Miller is an ambitious guy, went straight to Washington out of college and worked for a few firebrands and found his way to Jeff Sessions, who's now the attorney general, joined the campaign right before Iowa, has been along as a senior policy advisor, as a speechwriter, a jack of all trades. And he's someone who has really built this sort of um, sphere of influence around him, particularly with Donald Trump and Steve Bannon as well, we were just discussing, in terms of these core policy ideas, particularly on immigration, but also on some of these wider economic nationalism principles that we expect Donald Trump will further elaborate on, to some extent at least tonight. One thing that you guys get into in the piece is his fascinating biography, the son of Democrats in <laughs> Southern California, goes to Duke University, along the way becomes quite ardently conservative. How does he find his way to Washington rise through the ranks? Ardently conservative from a young age, yeah. and as you said, an unusual upbringing from, you know, some two Democrats, became known to sort of conservative radio uh, as when he was still in his teens, in fact. Uh, and, and that actually is part of his rise to such prominence, is that they view and that he views that he was able to spot this rising animosity towards immigrants in the country, towards the uh, sort of removal of manufacturing jobs, towards the issues that so many white collar American, blue collar Americans are, are facing today, and that they were able to spot it just in the rise to conservative media outlets that perhaps the traditional media wasn't listening to as closely during the campaign. He views that Trump and, and, and spotted Trump in 2014 mm. talking about some of these issues and saying Donald Trump gets it, wanted to jump aboard that team when that train got rolling. What uh, does his portfolio encompass? I recall seeing him on the Sunday shows uh, speaking as if he were a lawyer, he in fact did not go to law school, but saying that he was uh, offering guidance on this immigration uh, travel restriction himself to the president. He said that he did that. He speaks uh, as a lawyer might. Um, what is he? What's he responsible for within the White House? What he's, do we know about that? He's not a lawyer. And he's yeah, just a place one on television. But yeah, okay. he. Uh, one thing that's so fascinating is he's always been quite open and, and vehemently open about defending the sort of policies that he feels he's been instrumental in putting forward. Uh, he, you know, with Jeff Sessions, when Sessions was still a senator, really was first and foremost in uh, rallying against the sort of gang of eight immigration reform proposed this bipartisan effort to get through a comprehensive immigration restructuring in this country, feels that he was key in dismantling that, now is certainly at the forefront of that policy, so much, in fact, that when Trump's uh, refugee order, you know, banning refugees from seven Muslim-majority countries, mm -hmm. that was actually an intended strategy. It's one thing this piece goes into, to drop it late, to sort of anticipate protest movements. They thought it would actually galvanize Trump supporters. What they didn't realize that, in fact, what it did was lead to this massive backlash, not only against Trump, but against Stephen Miller personally, for the fact that they had sort of failed to explain it to some of the agencies who would, in fact, be interpreting and implementing yeah. that order. Josh Green talks to Steve Miller, something that stood out to me. He said, Donald Trump has fundamentally realigned American politics. It's time the media acknowledges this and gives him the credit he deserves. Stephen Miller is a capital B believer. Uh, in Donald Trump. He is a true believer, a holy warrior, I think, uh -huh. uh, would be described. Look, there's no light or air be be between them, and I think that what we're seeing in the Trump White House throughout is that the people who really uh, stay in his sunshine, stay in his ray of light, do very well at propping him up. He returns that sunlight back to after Stephen Miller gave quite controversial Sunday show appearances talking about potential voter fraud in New Hampshire, none of which has ever been shown. He got an attaboy tweet from Donald Trump. Certainly he is revolving around an orbit of one. It seems that the most successful people in that White House right now are mimicking that same trajectory. Uh, he gets the attaboy tweet, uh, does well, comports himself well on the Senate. Why isn't he standing at the podium delivering the daily press briefing? Why Why has he found himself <laughs> in the job he's in if he does so well expressing the I'm sure the there are days message. that Sean Spicer wishes, wishes that were Stephen Miller sure. was standing on yeah. that podium, that's for yeah. sure. Although Stephen Miller's time in the Saturday Night Live spotlight surely is not far off. But look, I think that he is uh, really likes to be the, the mouthpiece. You know, Steve Bannon is rarely heard from these days, but is certainly the sort of architect of a lot of the core economic nationalism, the core of the immigration strategy, the core of that make America great again. And so much about that is that make America first again. And certainly Stephen Miller is a core part of that and shaping those policies and will continue to be until at least he suffers some sort of fall, you know, the fall that we've seen from other Trump advisors in, in, in not too recent history.